Hey, space friends. So I am here at the Planetary Society and it is a vigil for the Cassini spacecraft, the spacecraft that's in orbit of Saturn, as you can see. And uh, we are preparing for Cassini to send its very last signal here tonight at 4 a.m. Right now, it's kind of early evening. Everyone's gathering around and sharing stories about what they love so much about Saturn and Cassini. And so I'm going to talk to a few people here and uh, stay up all night. So it's going to be a long night. Saturn is just, the first time I saw Saturn through a telescope, I cried. That was a big deal. I think I've seen other people do that too, where they see it for the first time and you just, you start crying. I don't know how I'll feel, but I wouldn't be surprised. I might cry, yeah. So Saturn, like Saturn's just like, it's one of those things like truth is stranger than fiction. Saturn proves that because I mean, couldn't make that up. Yeah, um, yeah it's so bizarre. It'd, It'd be, be so, so implausible. implausible. Those rings and the dips in the rings and the waves in the rings and the the propellers. Yeah, that's so. I love the propellers. And the vertical I structure. Of these buttons. My favorite encounter was the Iapetus flyby, which I don't remember right now what year that was, but they had one opportunity to go past Iapetus and get all the best pictures and data they could get of it um, from really up close. And they sequenced all of these mosaics that require the spacecraft to turn and, and kind of like do this typewriter motion along the, the planet. And then while they were slewing to another orientation, they caught all these images in motion of the, the Iapetus Ridge spinning away. And they maximized every opportunity to get as much data as they possibly could out of Iapetus. And it really taught me how difficult it actually is to get the most out of a flagship mission because they have so many instruments that are capable of so many things that they kind of um, test the limits of what humans can do to run these robots. So it's 2.30 in the morning now. We were at the Planetary Society party last night until 11 when a lot of people started dropping like flies. I think I'm about to see a lot of planetary scientists uh, very tired but very excited um, to go to the very final minutes of the Cassini mission uh, just before it breaks up into the atmosphere of Saturn. And so we are quite tired. I'm here with my friend Lisa Ballard who worked on the Cassini mission uh, data, actually looking at a lot of rings node data and, and getting it ready for scientists. So hopefully we'll talk to her later, but uh, we are going to go be going to Caltech where the majority of the science team is going. Some people are going to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Some people are going to Caltech. We're going to Caltech uh, and going to hang out with a lot of the science team. So here we go. I am so amazed to see this. I've never seen anything like this. All these people getting here at 2 33 in the morning. There's hundreds, maybe thousand people here already. Space fans are the best. Part of me just wishes the mission could keep going, especially because I'm a ring scientist. And for the last six months or so, we've been flying over the rings every week and we've gotten some of the best ring science, close-up images and things like that, of the rings just in the last few weeks and months. I'm sure it's gonna it's going to be very emotional when, when that signal disappears, when it goes to zero, when it flatlines, uh, and we know that the mission is really, really over. That's gonna, that's gonna hit me, but I'm not sure how it's going to hit me. I'm just getting prepared for whatever my reaction happens to be. <laughs> This has been an incredible mission, an incredible spacecraft, and you're all an incredible team. Now I'm going to call this the end of mission. Project manager, off the net. What does it feel like to be surrounded by all these people at 
five in the morning. This is really cool, actually. I mean, there are nearly 1,500 people, uh, supposedly, who are here. And there's a tremendous sense of camaraderie, um, everybody coming together for the end of something that many of these people have spent decades or their entire uh, uh, professional careers working on. There are more than 50 people here from all ages. They have strong careers, some of them are listening to you. So thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, it's so awesome to hear everyone in Tehran is watching along with us. Now that the uh, the signal has uh, the final signal has been here, how are you feeling? To me, the now the biggest loss is that operations team is going away. The people that I knew who ran the spacecraft for all these years and years, and you know that is going away. But the science is going to continue. We're going to keep working on the science for years. The biggest mysteries are. Uh, is there life in the ocean of Enceladus? Cassini set that one up. And where does the methane really come from on Titan? You know, Cassini heroically tried to give us the answers to that. It didn't give us a specific answer, but it told us where it's not coming from and pointed the way to maybe some other sources. I still want to know the answer to that. It's now six in the morning. I am back at the hotel room. Uh, there are plenty of people still at JPL and Caltech who are still celebrating the end of the mission of Cassini and really the end of the era of Cassini. And it's really hard to not get emotional about this spacecraft and about this mission. It's done so much for so long and people have really grown attached to it. It's hard to think that even though the planet Saturn still exists, that we don't have anything flying around it anymore. We don't have anything checking out Titan or Enceladus or its rings, all of these places in which we have so many more questions to ask and so many more mysteries to solve. But I think that's really the exciting thing about the future of space exploration and, and talking with all of the scientists who worked on the Cassini mission. While they're sad that this is the end of an era, they're really actually more excited for the beginning of future space missions, the beginning of exploring new mysteries, of exploring new things, and it just, it never ends. And so while we miss Cassini and love the Cassini spacecraft, we also really look forward to falling in love with new spacecrafts and new missions and new mysteries that are waiting to be discovered.